Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Session Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the Session 2 Group Feedback Presentation, Jesus gives group feedback regarding comparing the detrimental effect of making decisions by using our soul-based will to choose between pleasure and pain and the positive effect of choices with love and truth being our major consideration. Recorded on the 9th of March 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Okay, well let's uh, do our group feedback now. So I just changed this title. I've only got a few minutes with it, but uh, I'll just see how I'm going. Um, yeah, I've actually got no minutes. <laughs> Anyway, let's make 10. <laughs> uh, what I've noticed is that many of you in the course of this, uh, you know, of these sessions have been asking very, um, well, the best way I could put it is uh, selfishly motivated questions. Like this is why I wanted to uh, answer Sorsha's question because I felt it's not a selfishly motivated question. Do you, do you know what I mean? Jared's question felt to me to be not a selfishly motivated question because, because he was concerned about he, that he couldn't see his unloving behaviour with others. So to me that's not a selfishly motivated question. But the majority are asking selfishly motivated questions. And what I mean by that is you're asking questions where there's only a personal benefit to your level of pleasure or pain. So remember, so this, this comes back to the discussion that I was trying to raise with you earlier, and that is the soul making decisions only based on what is painful or pleasurable, right? You're not actually making decisions about love and truth in that place. You're also not asking any questions about God and your relationship with God and how your relationship with God's being impacted in the place. Because all you're concerned about is your personal pain and your personal pleasure. So many of you have been attracted to listening to my own teachings, you know, God's truth. And when I say my own teachings, I say it very loosely because it's actually God's teachings uh, that, that I've discovered. So it's not, they're not even my own teachings. But many of you only listen to it because of what you perceive is the personal benefit for doing so. You're not doing it because you, of asking yourself what is truthful or what is loving. You're only motivated by what's going to bring you pleasure or pain. So this tells me that the major motivation still inside of you is not the issue of love and truth, but rather the issue of pain and pleasure. That becomes your major motivation. Now, this is why the talk in a couple of days' time is going to be very important for you to listen to, the pain versus pleasure talk. Because, because you need to see what is really painful and what is really pleasurable. At this stage, you measure your pleasure based on your personal feelings. I've, I think I've written down here, I've said, most focus on their personal happiness or life when they're asking a question. There are very few questions about relationship with God or with others from the other person's perspective. In other words, what harm might be being done to both of those relationships. Rather, it's only focused on what kind of personal gain you will have. And this betrays quite a strong narcissistic tendency, doesn't it, if you think about it, where you're only interested in your personal gain, in your personal pleasure. And, and truth and love and error and and lack of love are not the major considerations in your even in your analysis anymore. All, the only thing that's a major consideration is whether you're going to get any pain out of it or you're going to have pleasure. And this is one of the primary reasons why many of you are really struggling emotionally. Because, because you go, oh, there's no pleasure doing that, so I'm not going to feel my emotions. Right? It's just quite a simple decision that you're making. Because that's the only motivating, motivating part of the decision for many of you. And uh, w w what can change here? What, what's going to change if you keep doing this? 
nothing really, is it? Like, how, how are you going to be guided by love and truth? How's your will going to be changed if the only measure you have of what's benefit to you is based on whether you're actually feeling some internal pleasure or feeling some pain? If that's the only measure you have, then it's highly unlikely that you're going to be motivated to do what's loving and truthful even though there might be pain involved. Because there might be pain involved. As I said, for you to progress beyond the world's condition, the world may project some pain at you. Right? And so under those circumstances, if you're only motivated by this, will you change? Definitely not. You just stay the same. Because that's the only motivation. Just a, it's just a simple pain versus pleasure thing inside of us. And I, I feel quite strongly that, that is, this is a question that you need to resolve for yourselves. Is this going to continue or not? Because if it does continue, you will not change the entire time you're living on earth. You won't. You, this is how you'll live out your life. And you will also be stuck in the spirit world in probably quite a hellish condition through all of the choices you've made as well for a long period of time if you continue to make that particular decision. Right? So, so to me, this is the main issue of what needs to change for many to, to stop analysing everything just from the personal benefit and to start seeing actually no love not only benefits myself but it also benefits everyone around me. So that means if I really am interested in loving, I won't just be concerned with my own personal benefit anymore. I will also assess the lack of benefit or the benefit to others in my choices and decisions. I'll also consider the benefit to, or the lack of benefit to, the environment in my decisions. Right? I won't just be motivated by the selfishness of, if it benefits me, I do it. If it doesn't benefit me, I don't do it. Right? So a person who exercises their will to love can see everything from a holistic perspective. Remember I said in my comments, I think it was to Karen, wasn't it, earlier today? Remember Karen's problem was that she wasn't looking at love of self. Remember that? So remember I said there were three things. We've got love of God, love of self, and love of others. <coughs> right? They are not like uh, choices that you make in a hierarchical process in, in some ways because if you have a good relationship with God you will automatically love yourself and you'll automatically love others, right? They're not mutually exclusive. But many of you treat it like that. Like love of self is exclusive with love of others. So there are times when other people want you to do things that you know is probably the loving thing to do but you don't want to do it because you feel it's not loving you. And I'm, so, I'm saying to you, no, if it's truly loving, it will benefit you as well as them by doing it. That's what it will do. But the majority of us are either this focused. And so that's current. That's where you're at. This focused, which is where the majority of you also sit, or this focus. And none of those loves are complete and therefore they are all going to cause some pain of some kind. Right? And some are even this focused. <laughs> and that's not going to get you anywhere aside from being ending up in a narcissistic <laughs> self-involved place. Right? And I'm not recommending that's what you do. So what I've done to a degree over the last 10 years in teaching is sort of almost in some ways pandered to your narcissistic personal perspective by answering your questions that are only for your personal benefit. Right? When you learn to love, it will benefit God, you, others, the world generally, the environment, it will benefit everything. That's what will happen. And if you're only interested in your own pleasure, 
you will never learn anything about love, ever. Does that make sense? Glinda, you'd like to ask? When I first recommenced my own spiritual journey, first with the way of the heart and Mm -hmm. then with divine truth, Mm -hmm. I would spend hours and hours and hours reading and listening and underlining and it was like I was thirsty and just couldn't get enough Mm -hmm. and it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then the last couple of years I can go months without even thinking about God or truth. So would this be... The reason? Yeah, you're hitting points where you no longer feel that you will gain pleasure from the further interaction with truth. So that that means you're hitting points of your own resistances, which means you're also hitting points regarding your facade and your hurt. You're hitting points with your addictions now. And, And most people, when they get to that particular place, that's when they step back from truth. So they're interested and involved in the external truths but as soon as now we've got to zone in on my personal emotions and actually working through my personal emotions the majority of people want to run away from truth then and and to be frank with you that's where the majority have gone over the last 10 years of teaching i must have taught uh, 30,000 people maybe more and at the moment there's what at the most about 3,000 people listening right now Now that means that 90% of people who hear Divine Truth love it at the beginning. They do. For 6 months, 12 months, they love hearing about it for 6 to 12 months. And then what happens is they start getting triggered personally, emotionally. They start realising there's personal work that's going to have to be done. That does not feed their addictions. And so what do they do? They no longer have any interest in it. That's how they manage it. Now, some of you have managed it by having an occasional interest. So you still feel like you're doing something, but, but not really doing much at all. Others have managed it by just rejecting it out of hand, saying that, no, I don't want to do it, it doesn't work, whatever. Right? And, and it's only the people who actually work through their personal stuff that in the end are going to receive benefit in their relationship with God. Because that's one of the things God's trying to help you do. God's trying to help you become more loving. right? And the personal addictions and the personal facade and the, and the desire for control and power over others and all these other emotions that exist within us, they're not helping us be loving. And God's basically saying, can you remove that from yourself before I can give you some more love? Uh, you know, you're, you're rejecting my love while you have that in you. And you're going, oh, but I like that in me. I like that in me, so I'm going to leave it. And I'm not going to have faith. And I'm not going to focus on truth. And I'm not going to take any action now. And I'm not going to do my emotional work. I'm not. I'm just going to play around the edges with it for a while. And who knows what will happen. I'll probably, usually, we drift off then. You know, we drift away. And that is a choice too. Many of you will drift away. And then only years later to find out that possibly you should have done the opposite thing. Does that make sense? Possibly should have embraced it and actually had a thirst for that personal truth. So what happens is that while we've got the thirst for external truth, we have desire. As soon as we realise that personal truth needs to be confronted, we no longer have a desire. So that tells me that I've got a huge resistance to feeling personal truth as God sees it. So that's the main issue. Yep. And it's a huge issue. Like I said, 90% of people who hear divine truth leave it. Right? I still feel somewhere in my gut that what you're saying is the truth. Well, no, you, you have a lovely guide who's telling you that it is, <laughs> which is okay. very different than you feeling it is. Because if you felt it was, you would act. See, this is the difference between inspiration, remember, and aspiration. You are being inspired to chase down divine truth but at this stage the aspiration to actually do it is not coming from within yeah by a guide that i don't feel much contact with yeah but they can influence you to be here that's how much power they have (laughs) they can actually influence you to come right but but the reality is they haven't been able to inspire you enough just like i haven't been able to inspire you enough to actually do things from your own aspiration from within yourself 
And that's the resistance to personal truth. That's the resistance to emotion. That's the resistance to faith. That's the resistance to taking action. Does that make sense? Yeah. So good question, Glenda. Now, um, I need to move on, otherwise we won't get to our final discussion. So hopefully you've seen the point of what I was trying to make there as a group, just the, the need for us to examine our motivations a bit better about why we actually listen to God's truth in the first place because the reality is we're not going to learn how to love if we're only focused on ourselves. We, we've got to have a more global focus, a, a more universal focus than that really. That's what we need to do. Okay, let's have a 10 minute break shall we? And then we'll have our concluding talk today. <laughs>